Hi everyone, it's Green Mom Zoe from Robandant. Today is September 5th and I wanted to make a video to discuss a very important issue that came up in the news yesterday. And no, it has nothing to do with politics, with uh, election year, political parties, or conventional coverage. It has actually a lot to do with our food choices. And because that is an issue that is very dear to my heart and my mission here, I felt that it's important to bring it up to everybody's attention, just in case you missed it in the midst of all this political TV coverage. Um, yesterday, Stanford University released a study that uh, discusses the benefits of organic produce versus conventional produce, and their findings are really startling. I will share a little bit of an excerpt from the study here. I printed it from the New York Times website. I'm sure you can find the study on any major news outlet. But here's what it says. Um, they conducted that fruits and vegetables labeled organic were on average no more nutritious than their conventional counterparts, which tend to be far less expensive, nor were they any less likely to be contaminated by dangerous bacteria like E. coli. Conventional fruits and vegetables did have more pesticides issues, um, residues, I'm sorry, but the levels were almost under um, the allowed safety limits. What I found really troubling about this study is that it sounds very one-sided, skewed, and biased. And even though the main researcher, Dr. Bravada, said that they didn't use any outside um, financing for the research, it still doesn't make complete sense to me. Uh, none of the TV networks or the websites of Czech have discussed this in further detail, which uh, also um, adds to the whole confusion now there to many consumers. So we really need to like examine this a little bit more to find out if it is valid and how much merit it really has. All right, let's look into this issue deeper now. Is organic produce any more beneficial to us than conventional produce? The Stanford article and study says, no, it's not. It's pretty much the same nutritional benefits. But last month when I was traveling to California, I picked up Psychology Today magazine, which is on the stands right now, and a particular article inside caught my attention, which I really wanted to read. Uh, little did I know this article would become very useful in today's argument because it discusses particularly pesticides and their effect on our development. Uh, the article is called Stealth Attack. I don't know if you can see it, but this is what it looks like in the magazine. It's towards the back. And um, it says this. There's a troubling new evidence that common pesticides persisting on foods are undermining physical and mental health. The surprising part is that problems occur at doses everyone thought were safe. How well, 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 you know, just going back to the argument of the Stanford study saying that um, even though conventional produce contains pesticides, they're at very low levels, saying that basically it's okay to buy conventional. Well, it's not so much okay. Um, the article at um, Psychology Today, which I highly recommend that you read, whether rent it in the um, uh, local library or pick it up from the newsstands, um, there's some interesting data here, and I'm not going to go into deep discussion, I'm just going to highlight the few things that really struck me in it. Uh, but one of the effects that they found out through one of the studies conducted was uh, the effect of pesticides on the farmer workers. Uh, people living in agricultural areas face additional exposure by working directly with pesticides and inhaling drift from fields where they are sprayed. Each year, physicians diagnose 10 to 20,000 cases of poisoning among the 2 million farmer workers in the United States. So what does that tell you is that people who are bringing this conventional produce to your table are paying a great price for it because they're directly exposed with these chemicals. Even though there's like safe whatever safe uh, limits are uh, considered, um, you know, to the end consumer, the people who are growing the produce are not in a safe condition. So that is something that really um, bothers me personally. Another issue has to do with um, the effects of pesticides on uh, the fetus and on uh, toddlers and young children. A 2010 study published in the Journal of Pediatrics by researchers from Harvard and University of Montreal 
found that current exposure to a group of organophosphate pesticides increases the risk a child will develop attention deficit hyperactivity or disorder. And then it just goes on to talk more how children, you know, uh, who were um, raised or um, subjected to conventional produce while they were in the womb of their mother or when they were little, are much more likely to develop uh, developmental disorders in their early childhood year, years. Uh, I'm a mom, and I'm sure many of you out there are either parents or have siblings that are young or grandparents. You all have to be concerned about this. I don't think any parent wants to have and run this risk of their children uh, being exposed to pesticides and then worry about what kind of developmental effect this will have on their babies and toddlers. Um, another interesting point in the article has to do with hormones. Uh, chemicals that mimic hormones can have profound effect that cannot be predicted by the actions of the same agents at higher doses. Um, what interesting studies here revealing that um, to some degree these pesticides can alter our hormonal development and they found that mice that were exposed to certain pesticides became hermaphrodite as they were developing. Uh, they didn't have neither male nor female characteristic. Um, now I understand that's not something that was done on humans so you might say well you know uh, animals are different than humans, but to me, seeing this effect in animals is a big red flag. Another interesting finding here has to do uh, with um, um, different illnesses like um, Parkinson's disease. A 2009 study reported in the American Journal of Epidemiology looked at 368 people who had been diagnosed with Parkinson's disease uh, the neurodegenerative condition characterized by um, disabling tremors between 98 and 2007. All 368 lived within 550 yards of farm fields that had been sprayed with pesticides for at least five years prior to their diagnosis. Another traveling finding. I mean, yes, children are definitely uh, more susceptible to develop uh, illnesses and disorders due to pesticide exposure, but also adults, elderly people, we are not safe at all. Just because we are further along in the, our developmental process does not make us any less um, um, safe or any more safe because people can actually develop Parkinson illnesses. That is, you know, one study that just suggested this. So this is some interesting findings that you can read in the um, Psychology Today that will really open your eyes when you speak about conventional produce. And the other troubling thing about this study is that it doesn't paint a full picture of where the conventional produce came from. Was it grown in China? Was it grown in Canada? Was it grown in Mexico? Or was it grown at the farmer down the street? I mean, some farmers choose not to get the organic certification, but still raise their produce according to the organic standards. So that produce technically, even though it's conventional, is no less nutritious than the organic certified one. So this study doesn't tell us where did they get the samples from, and therefore it's under big question. I know what you're thinking now. You're probably scared to death and you're thinking like, how am I gonna go on if I cannot afford organic produce but I want to buy organic produce? What are some tips that you can give me? I tell you what folks, you're not the only one that has gone through this dilemma. Uh, what I wanna point you to is a very good resource that I've been using in my choices is the Environmental Working Group's Dirty Dozen list. It's available at the ewg.com. You can type it on a search engine and you can find it, download it, print it, cut it up, uh, put it on your refrigerator. Uh, what this list does, it gives you a list of fruits and vegetables that are okay to buy conventional and those that you should definitely look for uh, organic form because they use too much pesticides. And uh, another rule that I've been using personally is that if a fruit or vegetable has a peel that you have to remove, such as a lemon or banana or avocado, those you can buy conventional. Because even if they're sprayed with something on the outside, you're not eating that peel. You always remove it. So that is another way you can decide which one to go for organic or conventional.
And the last tip, if you must buy conventional at any cost, get a fruit and vegetable wash like this one. Uh, this is by Environ and I use it in my home, also in my place of business to wash all of our produce. Um, it's very safe to use. It removes pesticides, waxes, chemicals. You just fill a bowl with water. You uh, put a little bit of this concentrated liquid, soak your produce for five minutes, then just rinse it out. And all of, well, not all of the pesticides, but a great amount of what may be on the outside of this fruit and vegetable is gonna wash away with the water. So that can give you a little sense of security when you are um, working with conventional produce. Friends, the bottom line is this. Studies such as the Stanford University study shouldn't be telling you what you should be buying. Government shouldn't be telling you what you should be buying. Nobody should be telling you but yourself. You need to examine the pros and the cons of organic versus conventional produce. Get the data, get the facts, make your decision. Because that decision is gonna impact not only you, your family, but also the community. Think about what's important to you. Which jobs, which economy do you want to support? The ones here in your community or the ones in Mexico, Guatemala, Canada, China, wherever else in the world? Well, also think about who benefits from this kind of studies. Is it you, the consumer, or is it some special interest group? A big corporation, maybe. Someone like Monsanto. And if you haven't heard of Monsanto, I strongly recommend that you educate yourself. They are behind all the genetically modified crops in the world. And, as you know, genetically modified foods cannot qualify under the organic standards. So that's the only security that we have out there to know what we're eating is actually real food. So think about all of this, and I hope you make the right decision, not just for yourself, but also for our own community, for our world. Thank you for watching, and may God bless you.